Bonjour, mesdames and messieurs. In this video, I want to show you how we can go from a very boring underexposed photo of the French Opéra Garnier in Paris to this amazing result that you can see here. All right, let's get started. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer. I live in the US and I love to teach photography. I'm trying to make three videos a week right now and I'm gonna teach you Lightroom and Photoshop and the art of photography. I have done seven coffee table books. I'm working on my book number eight, which is gonna be a best of and my work is in 120 galleries around the world. And I hope this inspires you to go to Paris and other places and take some photos. So let's get started. So this is a photo I shot of the French opera. I went onto the department store of the Galerie Lafayette and this is the view that I got. So what I did is I, I think tripods are not allowed from there. So you see, I went to 500 ISO F4 because that was the widest lens that I could, you know, my lens, my 24-105 can only open to F4. And then I go to 1 40th of a second. Now, why 1 40th of a second? Because 1 40th of a second is the smallest speed I can do with still, you know, with the self timer. So I, I put my camera on a self timer and then I take, a, I wait one or two seconds and text the photo. And at 1 40, usually they're pretty sharp. And you will see they are pretty sharp. So I took one photo. Then you have to make sure you got about 20% overlap. I took a second photo and then a third photo, a fourth photo, and a fifth photo. And then, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all the photos, and then if you right click, so make sure you shoot in a row, it's very important, you'll get a much better result. You right click and you go to Photo Merge, Panorama. And Panorama is gonna show you three different ways of stitching the photos together, making them in one photo. You see, and you can see already it looks better because I've got auto settings on, so you can see a bit what's happening. And perspective is not gonna work on this one, the reason why it doesn't work is that if you have some objects which are too close to you, usually perspective doesn't work. Cylindrical and spherical actually gives me a good result. I think I'm going to go to cylindrical. I want to have more, like basically the difference is this is more squash and this gives me more space. And so, all right, I'm going to uh, uh, do merge. I've already done the merge, which is here, ready to go. And now I'm gonna show you a little workflow I like to do, which is my natural drama formula, which is a five-step process. Step number one is get the exposure right, okay? So I'm going to open the shadows and I'm gonna bring down the highlights and I'm gonna do my black and I'm gonna do my white, my black here, and it's already coming up. And by the way, guys, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna do, I have a video coming up on how to turn like really sort of boring daylight photo uh, you know, that I shot in Africa into like an amazing fine art black and white, like in the style of Nick Brand or Ansel Adams. Uh, make sure you subscribe to see that video and leave me a comment. Tell me what you would like to learn. I read every single one of them. That really helps me if you leave me a little comment and, you, you know, and all that good stuff. But like subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out the next video. That's the most important part. Okay, so already the exposure is better. If you press the backslash key, you can see the before and after. Already we can see what's going on. We have like all the weird stitching and stuff like that. So we're gonna have to crop the photo. But I before before you can crop, you gotta see the photo so you can see how you're gonna crop it. And you can see here, that's the big issue. Somebody was smoking a cigarette or something. I don't know. There was something is going there on going on there. So I'm gonna go to the crop tool. I'm gonna take the angle. I'm gonna make sure my angle, my horizon is really straight. And then I'm gonna go 16 by 9 here. You see here where it says original, you can click here and you get like some tailor-made crop. And I like 16 by nine because it's my computer screen. And most of the prints that I do is my galleries, I do 16 by nine. I don't know, it's just, it's cinema. And I'm gonna align the horizon exactly on the rule of thirds. So I got one third of sky, two third of the city. I tell you, if you go to Paris, you gotta check out the rooftop of the Galerie Lafayette. They also have an incredible restaurant. Oh, but I still got the this hand here. I can't have this because I actually sold this to the gallery, so I think I'm gonna just gonna crop that out. I could go to Photoshop and do uh, magical stuff, but right now I wanna stay in Lightroom for this one. Plus, yeah, I like that. I'm just gonna crop this thing out. And now it's already looking good. So now comes the white balance, which is a step number two. So white balance, because it's a raw file, despite the fact that it's a panel, it's still a raw file. There is different white balance, which are different presets here. Just a little thing, I don't know if you know this, but what is the difference between the as shot and auto? Well, I'll tell you what, as shot, 
basically I shot this, I think with automatic white balance at the time. I usually put it on automatic white balance. And um, well, actually I don't always put my camera on automatic white balance. Sometimes what I do is I find the best at white, at ba at white balance what I'm shooting. Why am I doing that? Because that way I try to get the JPEG out of the camera to look the closest possible to my final result. Why? Because if you get a good, nice preview of your JPEG, uh, that's why I also put my camera always in vivid or create, uh, you know, on the creative style. If you're on Sony, you know, you have different settings, which is like uh, landscape, portrait, and neutral. I always put it on vivid because I like very vivid photos and I always make sure I have the right white balance. That way I can appreciate, like when I take the shot, it's kind of already a bit retouched and I can see, oh, this actually turns out nice. I'm gonna stay here or I'm gonna try a different composition. If your white balance is off uh, or you're underexposed, you can't really appreciate your photo on the preview, you might leave and go somewhere else when this could have been a great photo. Because sometimes just the way the photo is is very different from the way um, you see things. Like you see things and you take a photo, it's like, oh my God, it's good. That's a general idea. Anyway, so the white balance I shot is the white balance of your camera. Basically, the one designed by the Sony engineers, because this was shot with the Sony 7R 3 I think. And the auto is going to be the one designed by the Adobe engineers. And so the, I actually prefer the Sony engineers than the Adobe. It's a little warmer, a little more magenta. You don't see much difference. And then you've got different settings, which are like daylight. It's a very classic one. This one is going to make it very blue. And then you have cloudy. It's going to make it a lot warmer. I like cloudy on this one. It works pretty well. And then you have shade. Shade is going to be even more warm. I really want to make it warm. I think I'm going to go to shade on this one. It actually works well. But I feel there's a lot of yellow in this, a lot of tungsten. You know, cities at night, there's a lot of tungsten. So I'm going to add a little bit of magenta. Yeah, actually a lot more magenta to really, the magenta is gonna make all the magenta that were hidden in the clouds come alive, alive. And so now we did step number two of the natural drama formula. The step number three, this one is optional, but I, I do it on, on especially, it's, it doesn't change very much. It's color, basically making your color better. So you got three settings, U, saturation, and luminance. And the way I like to do this is I use this little tool here called the targeted tool. You click on it and basically what it does is you can click like on that yellow. If you go up, it becomes very much, oh, I'm on the wrong slider. I'm on luminance. I want to be on you. Sorry about that. So uh, let me show you again. If I go up, the yellow becomes very green. If I go down, it becomes very red. And so the truth is somewhere in the middle. I like my yellows to, you see, I, I can see that this slider is affecting mostly the yellow, which makes sense because it's mostly yellow. So what, what I want to do is I want to have my yellow a bit more orange. I want my orange a bit more orange. Like I want things to be, I want this whole area to be a little more orange than green. I don't like green. I don't like green in sunset. I don't think they don't look natural. And so it's not a huge deal. You can see with the eyes before, after. I mean, yeah, it's more orange. That's what I wanted. So, and then saturation, when it comes to a beautiful sunset like this, I just add a bit of saturation on the first three colors to really make it pop. Uh, I mean, look at this, before, after, like this is really popping. It's popping. And then, oh, by the way, guys, I wanna show you something really cool. Uh, I'll show you that after. I have a little present for you if you stick around to the end of this video, which you're gonna love, it's just in two minutes. The next thing I'm gonna do is luminance. Now luminance, see, a color can be more or less saturated, but a color can also be more or less dark. So for example, if you take the same tool and you click here, Check this out. You go up, the sky goes brighter. You go down, the sky goes darker. And I do want to make the sky a little bit darker. So I'm going to go down. Just make sure that your settings never go over 40. Because if you go over 40, you might get, and let me, let me zoom in. I'm going to press the space bar to zoom in. You might get what we call some artifacts. See, I'm already getting some artifacts. Some noise is coming down. So I'm just a little bit there, but not too much. Not too much. But check it out. So before the use and uh, saturation luminance, before, after. The sky is darker. The whole sunset comes better. Arr, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. Next step is going to be the uh, next step is going to be the dodge and burn. Now on this one, dodge and burn is making the photo brighter or darker in some part of the photo. On this one, eh, 
not really uh, needed because uh, there's a lot of lights already. There's a lot of, you see, the more complex the light is, the more interesting it is to me. But I do want people to look inside and here it's kind of bright. So I'm, I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a gradient. So you click here, you choose gradient and then you click and drag. And when you click and drag and then, for example, you lower the exposure, whatever that value is here, minus 0.58 is going to be at full force between the beginning of the photo and that red dot. And from that red dot to that white dot, it's going to go on a gradient. So the gradient can be very short. And so if you do that, it's going to look weird. I mean, like, let me just add more exposure. See, it's going to make like a very uh, fast gradient. But if you go like this, ooh, and then you bring it down, that is much more smooth. I, I just, this was a bit too bright to me. I think I want to add one more uh, on the very top of the photo. I want the very, very top to be a bit darker. Ansel Adams used to have a lot of this very, very top photo, a bit darker. Yeah, I like that. And then I think, I think I want to make some of the city shine a bit more. And so the way I'm going to do that, that's really dodging. I'm going to take a brush. And then I want, to, I want to show you something about the brush. It's interesting. So if you have the feather all the way down at zero, meaning there's, there's no feather and the flow density is all the way up, and then you add some exposure, here is what's going to happen. When you brush, it's going to do that. Not very good, right? But if you bring the feather all the way to 100 and you brush next to it, it's going to do that. It's already better, but it's still too visible. But now if you bring the feather all the way to 100 and you lower the flow and density in the 70s, I was born in 1970, now it's a lot more subtle. And if you lower the exposure, it's even more subtle. And that's what we want. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to take a brush and I'm going to go in the 70 on the brush. I'm going to go the feather all the way to 100 and then I'm going to add a bit of exposure and a bit of minus clarity. Why do I add minus clarity? Because minus clarity is the equivalent of a glow. And I just want to make a little bit the light here and here glow very ever slightly. Glow, 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 my friend. Glow, glow, glow. So maybe I'm going to go up to 0.57. Look at this photo. I, this is Paris to me. This is what Paris seems like. Okay, and the last step is going to be, remember we were at 500 ISO, which is pretty high. So there's a bit of noise, but not so much. This is going to make a beautiful print. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my sharpening here. And I'm just going to, because I was at like uh, very high on ISO, I'm just going to go like to about 10 in, in, in noise reduction and about 90 in sharpening. So what I do, my formula is that sharpening plus noise, maybe 15 and 85. So it must be equal to 100. I've been using this format for years. I invented this, but very important also is that the masking is in the 60 and the 70. I show you why. If you hold on the option key or the alt key on Windows and you go right, what you see here in white is where the sharpening is happening. You don't want to sharpen the sky. So you want to sharpen just the edges. So usually for that, you have to go over the 60, 70. And boom, look at this photo. Look, can you imagine we went from this to this? It's absolutely crazy. Now, I have a surprise for you guys if you're staying all the way. I'm going to give you a little present. I'm going to give you my free toolbox. The link is under the video and I'm going to... Free tools box is so much stuff, but the main stuff that is is preset. So I'm going to go here. You see, I have no preset. I'm going to go here and import preset. And just to show you the power of this, basically, you're going to get all of that. There's so much stuff you're going to get. Free toolbox. You're going to get Lightroom, Lightroom preset brushes. I'll show you in different videos. I mean, you actually have a full training that goes with it. But just to show you on the preset, I'm just going to select this two zip file, literally just select two zip file. And now I got a two set of free preset. And check this out. I can go here, for example, on this photo of Manhattan Beach. And I'm going to go, for example, to sunset. It looks bad, right? But check this out. If I do my black point, which I didn't show you, black point is pixel which 100% black. And I do, and I make this a bit bigger and make it, make it straight. In a few clicks, I'm going to get an awesome, awesome, maybe adjust the white balance. I'm going to get an awesome result. Check this out. This is also this sunset. This is a sunset. Boom, look at that. Look at the before and after. And you know, you can go even more crazy. Before and after of Beverly Hills photo. Look at this one. Boom, golden hour. Are you ready? Bam, one click. I mean, it's crazy. I'll show you again. One click. 
You should try this preset on your photo. It's crazy. Uh, let's do a little Ansel Adams black and white. Let me reset this one. Okay, check this out. Let's go to the black and white. Ansel Adams, here I come. One, two, three. I'm going to take a three. I'm going to take one. Look at that. Boom. And of course, you can adjust. There's over 27 things. I think the, the one thing I'm the most proud of the photographer is my preset. I have had thousands of photographers sending me. Like, I couldn't believe what the preset did to my photo. It's crazy. Try it on your profile. Link is under this video. Watch the training. Watch the training so you know how to use them. That was just a little sneak peek. And make sure you check out next video, which is going to be on making a very similar photo to this beautiful African scene coming up. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. And it's all free for you. I'll see you in the next video.